Hello, welcome back to my channel. I'm just going to preface this video because I'm going to cut to something that already arrived before I come back and open this with you. This is probably my last art haul video for a while. And the reason why is I believe that I have plenty of art supplies and I don't really need to buy anything else. So this January 2024 will be the last art haul video. If you're here for the art hauls, my apologies. I think it's important that I do not just keep buying art supplies when I don't need any more at the moment. I'm going to roll with the items that already have been filmed but this one just came and I wanted to share this with you after. Today we are going to do my January art haul. Now this is a mix of Christmas gift from my dad and some things that I had bought that arrived over like the December January period back in the UK and here and I'm just going to share them with you now. So you've possibly, I won't say probably, possibly seen these already. These were in my Christmas gift art haul. They were from, I bought them with many that was given to me by my dad for Christmas. I do have another thing on its way, but um, yeah, there's these. So I'm not going to show you them now. Again, I'll just overlay a snippet of what they look like swatched out so you can see them. And with that in mind, I had actually ordered these fun little tiny containers, which came, oh my gosh, the light's a bit bad. We have snow, so let's see if I could get away some of those shadows that might be falling over. How's that? I had ordered these after seeing them on Mel Chadwick's channel. The only problem I have is they did get scratched traveling back because I kind of overloaded my suitcases. I had multiple bags, so these were in perfect condition, but as you can see, this is a new one. It's a massive scratch down the front, but hey ho, that's life. Now I got these because I've seen them in videos of Melanie Chadwick and she keeps her neo colors, I think, in them based upon color. I thought it was a great idea. However, what I didn't take into consideration is that neo colors as they are are quite long, so I can't even fit that in, but I do have a habit of snapping them. The only thing is, this is such a beautiful little collection I have here that I'm loath to snap them. But at the same time, I don't have a tin because I've been buying them as open stock. I don't have a tin to put them in. So I think I'm going to keep them like this for now. I'm going to have a look on like eBay and what's that other one someone shared with me? Vinted. Here we have a place called Mark Platz maybe. And you can buy things from way cheap. So it might be that I can find like a half filled Neo Color 40 set or something in Adamant. So we'll see what happens with these. I do like the idea of just putting in a few different pieces in. So like fill this blue one with blue colored variety of mediums. It might be like a blue gouache, a blue pencil, a blue crayon. So we'll see how those progress because I'm not quite sure how I'm going to use them yet. The next thing I got was the Faber-Castell Earth Green Marker. I've been loving markers since I did my month of brush pen because these are water brush pens, not like or water markers, whatever you want to call them. They're not acrylic markers. And I spent December working with these to build up my confidence. I did already create a video on those and I will share that in the corner up here somewhere. But like you can see an example of what I had done with these. And I really like this color. So let me just grab a bit of paper. Okay, it is a bit scrappy, but it will do. So this is the Albrecht Jura watercolor marker in earth green. And I've seen this in Katie Moody's Patreon videos and I love the color. Look at that. Isn't that just really, really pretty? And it has a bullet tip side, which is darker. And I think the dark olive is a nice match. Maybe the dark green in my neo colors. I'm quite excited and they work over nicely as well. So that's the earth green. And because it was a Caran Dash sale, I of course grabbed a few more Luminance pencils. Now, the these are all new items. Like I don't have them apart from this one is the Dark Indigo, which I've been using loads and I just wanted to have a spare one with me. So you've probably seen the Dark Indigo before because I have shared it, but it's a really lovely dark, dark, dark. Let me zoom you in a bit. The light is a bit duff because of the snow. So hopefully it's bright enough that you can see. Then I got blue denim. Yeah, blue denim. Then we have middle cobalt blue. I do have other cobalt blues. I've got cobalt blue main, I think it is, as well as the light. And it's a lovely color, like much brighter. And then raw amber 10%. This is so lovely. It's almost like a type buff titanium watercolor color. And here is buff titanium, which is paler, but still warm. Can you see the two? And then I also got violet pink which is also a lovely colour. Just even the combination of those six was really nice, I think. 
Okay, so other things, I've got one more art supply to share with you that I'll unpack with you because I haven't actually looked at it properly. But some other things that I had ordered in December, which I only picked up in the UK. So first of all, we have Mal Chadwick's sketchbook calendar. I actually ordered this in November and it never arrived here in the Netherlands. And Mel kindly sent a new version to my dad's in the UK. And then recently emailed to say that the original turned up at hers and the Dutch postal system had tried to charge extra duty or Customs or something and that would be why it didn't make it through because I had bought it via Fo Foxy so that was included um, so the Dutch is just a bit dodgy like that. Anyway she sent me a note saying many thanks you for your patience and understanding enjoy the calendar and zines Mel and I'd seen this on her website a while ago and then I saw Sandy has to share it and I was like I need to get this because how inspiring is that like imagine feeling stuck for inspiration here they are look so I knew it was Mel that had them I don't know how she's fitting them in she must be like scrubbing them down to get them to fit but this is why I bought the tiny boxes because I was inspired but look I love how she does the outlines of the rocks on the beach I think that's really nice and I think this is a great thing to do is to you know look at artists who you follow and are inspired by and obviously don't copy their work because their style is their style and you'll find your own seeing something that you like that you can practice with and you'll end up modifying it to make it your own but I just love her work like I wouldn't that's really busy and detailed for me I wouldn't do that but I love looking at it and the same here it's just it fills me with joy <laughs> so that's her zine uh landscapes of the lizard then i'm gonna put it in a way that's not going to disrupt the lighting this is her 2024 calendar and it's sketching through the seasons inspired by the lizard peninsula cornwall i'm not going to take you through the whole thing because i don't think that's right to do but she's got like pages from her sketchbook and then actual pages to write on so ideally i'd put this up in the kitchen and we'd use it to organize things but my partner has a habit of writing and scribbling and i don't want this one ruined so i think this one will go into my office but it's absolutely beautiful and then i'd also ordered this one after i'd ordered mouse i saw this one on instagram by matt johnson who said thanks so much for your order all the very best um so it's really nice getting these little cards as well and i absolutely love this my dad was not so keen when i showed it to him or maybe he preferred this one and david preferred my fiance preferred the other one but i just love all the texture let me show you the back because it has all of them there all the different pages i love the color palette the consistency and i love the different textures for each i don't know how he does them whether he's a digital or real artist like analog rather than digital I don't mean like real because obviously digital is real as well I need to go and just like learn a bit more but I loved he shared I think it was the robin I think I'd seen a photo of that and I was like I need to get this calendar because it's so beautiful so I'm really excited about that one as well okay the final thing to share with you is this item from just go sketching which I actually ordered I think it was sometime in early November and I was supposed to get home to the UK in December and that didn't happen so I only just picked it up in January Ta da <laughs> I haven't unpacked, unpacked it. I just removed it from the box that it came in to bring it back so it's less bulky. And I'm quite excited about this because I've seen lots of people using it. It has a little card. Thank you for choosing Just Go Sketching. I hope you enjoy using it. Happy sketching, Ian. So it's from Cornwall. My belief is that he makes them by hand, handcrafting. So there's this main section, but let me open up the other bits first. First up, there's this little calico cotton pouch. And inside that we have something for non-metal palettes. Oh. Okay, so they're little, but little sticky things, double coated tape. I'm guessing it's to make something metallic. Oh, there you go. So if you've got a plastic palette, I guess you stick these on and then your palette will then stick onto. So like those Winsor Newton, not the professional ones, the cotton. Those are plastic. So I guess you could stick these on and then it would attach. There is also, I'm going to rip this open because I can't get it out otherwise. Tiny little square one as well. Next up, we have these board clips. So I suspect these are probably like the clips that I ordered from Jackson's in is that December or November. Yeah, exactly the same. So those will go over to hold your sketchbook in place. And I will show you how it works in a second. Remove the little pouch. Then we have... It's a shame that there's cellophane. I don't like cellophane. Um, but hey-ho. There's a little guide on how to use it. Watercolour pigments. Um, sketching kit. 
and then how to use it. I'm not sure what that's for. We'll just pop it there. Maybe it's like a mini sponge of some sort. And then there's a little pigment, Pro Quality Pigments Indian Red PR101. Can you see that? Mold in Cornwall by an artist for artists. So we can have a look at that. And then the main shebang is this, which is what I wanted. <laughs> and let me show you why. So it has this little water clip. So you've probably seen these before. I've got one somewhere. It's just a little syllable. I think mine is a double. This one's a single. So you just clip it on very easily and have a little pot of water. It then has this elastic band. You put a pen, pencil, brush, whatever you need. This is a rock ring Tiki 2 pencil, which is very nice of him to include. Never say no to a mechanical pencil. And then, yeah, so the elastic, as you know, I've already shown you. This is the, I'm guessing that we don't peel that off. Or maybe we do. I don't know if that's supposed to come off or not. So I'm just going to leave it there for now. And then we have the palette. Boom. No really tight actually so this is my nifty little palette the hang on the pans are probably gonna fall out so let's do it like this so. I cannot get that to come off <laughs> but my pans have moved around a bit so that's good to know so maybe what we do is we test it this is a small how big is it it's 15 centimeters by 11 centimeters. There we go. So my understanding is that you slot it like this and you open the page where you want it to be. Maybe you would want less contact. So maybe like that. And then And then I've got everything, let me zoom you out a bit. I've got everything to hand. I just have my paintbrush. Swishy, swishy. I feel like this isn't working with this. La 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 la. Off we go. Let me get my Royal Talons one. Okay, so this is my nine centimeters by 14. So that's 18 by 14 attached. See, I can easily sit there. This is great. Like if I want to go out and just sit and grab my kit out quickly, psh, 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 that would be really cool. Let's test it on a bigger size sketchbook. So this is my A4 sketchbook and I've sectioned out these, I don't know what we call them, sections, <laughs> because I want to do some mini studies. So let's see whether it can handle whether this is just too bulky. I think what I would be inclined to do is add a bigger clip. I'm not sure that's working. Hmm. <laughs> I mean, it works. Realistically, would I go out and hold my A4 sketchbook, which becomes A3 when it's fully open? It's unlikely, but it does, like it is secure, look. So it does work. I just don't think it's something I would use for this size. I think the one that I got was the five by seven, the board. Um, and I think it does do bigger versions. That might be more suitable for an A4 sketchbook. But I think you do need a question like, are you likely to be standing around holding a big sketchbook in your hand and painting? Because I know that my arm would ache within a few minutes. Whew, right. And then just to show you this. So I've gotten out my regular Royal Talon sized sketchbook. It's like the one that is 14 by 21 centimeters. And it because this sketchbook is a lot chunkier, I guess is the right word, you can see how it's like disrupting the fall of the paper when you're early on in the sketchbook. So I guess it would only work if you were like halfway in and then the paper would lay flatter. So I'm not sure how sensible it is for that, but it worked really, did work really nicely with this one, which is the little one that I'm more likely to use when out and about just to get quick sketches down. I'm trying not to show anything else in the sketchbook because I'll be doing a review of my January art practice and I'm not sure if it comes up before or after this video. So there you go. Pretty nifty. I think it's, I think it was like 20 pounds. I might be imagining that. I'm not sure. Uh, but it's going to be nifty and I can't wait to test it out. Okay, so this did come from Jackson's. You can see it says import parcel cleared and it actually was purchased with, well, one of the items was purchased with money from my dad. For Christmas. Ooh, it's a big old box. 
I might have to like do some bendy configurations. Let's get rid of that because that'll have personal information. We have an item. Ooh. Okay, let's dive in. Hopefully the light's okay. It's mid-afternoon. It's about an hour away from sunset. My partner has left my fiance. I keep forgetting to say that. Anyway, he's left the house for a few hours, so I've got time to video in peace. This is my little Jackson's haul. As I said, it's the last art supplies that I'll be sharing in an art haul for a while. I might instead do one like every three months once the supplies, if I need anything. But my thinking is from here on out is it's likely only going to be restocks of stuff if I run out. So the first thing I got was a master's brush cleaner and preserver because I don't have anything to like keep my brushes clean. Mm, smells like a cleaning product. Um, apparently this one's pretty good. It cleans oil paint, watercolour, acrylic and stains. Oh, it smells quite strong actually. Whew, that's just probably shouldn't have had a whiff. Made in the USA. I'll test that out at some point and let you know how it is. And then... This was just something little really. A smooth plywood panel from Jackson's. It's unsized, it's ready to paint on with a water-based paint. Or it can be primed to use with oil. And I figured I'd just get it because I think it was like two pounds and I thought it'd be interesting to use. You can only buy one at a time because it's like a sample. So you're limited to one per order. Then I got this rigger simply because it is the number one pro art acrylic rigger. It's the one that, you see how big that is? my hand i have another one that's smaller that is recommended by ian fennelly um so i have like a specific urban sketching kit his recommended products and a few others for any of the tutorials that i follow in the urban sketch plus community area like membership area and this is the brush that he recommended so i was like i'll grab that i think it's like three pounds so quite cheap and he recommends the acrylic one because it can take a beating whereas because it's like more structured bristles i guess whereas watercolor ones are quite often a bit softer that was his reasoning i think anyway i also got a tube of daniel smith now if you've seen any of my other daniel smith videos or art haul videos you might be able to guess what color this is because it's one of my favorites but i will tell you because <gasps> it's undersea green i love this color and i don't have any left in the tube and there's a reason why i ordered it which you'll see in a moment the next thing well i'll show you this because i'm saving the big thing till last <laughs> big in terms of uh, fabulousness not in size so this is another item that you can only buy one of from Jackson's, like they limit you one per customer. And it's a cotton canvas board, traditional ADGSM textured cotton canvas primed to 280 GSM, wrapped glued to suppress the cardboard, suitable for oil and acrylic painting. Thin washes to thick impasto marks. I thought I'd just give it a go because I don't have anything like this and February is going to be my acrylic month and I know I can use them like in paper primed in a sketchbook but I wanted to have like a board for like a finale project so I grabbed it. It might be a disaster but at least I'm prepared right? And then because I can hide it from you no longer this is from my dad. So basically if you caught my Christmas art haul video I spoke about the Christmas presents I got that were art related and my dad was going to get me a voucher for Jackson's but we couldn't work out how to do it. So anyway he pinged money to my bank account and I had re-bought some Neo Colors which I show you in that video so I'll link it up here if you want to go back and see that at the end. It'll also be down in the description but with the remaining because he actually sent me more than I expected. <laughs> So I bought myself something that's peg and all, which if you know their products, they're quite expensive. Actually, they're very expensive. And so they're not necessarily, necessarily something I would treat myself to. Basically, it's not a want. No, it's not a need. It's a want. Um, I don't need to have it, but I wanted to have it. And so I got myself, because it's a Christmas gift, I can justify it. <gasps> Look at that. It's a little palette. Now, the great thing about this is it's really narrow. The not so great thing is the price. I'm gonna grab my mini palette to show you. So I had bought this mini palette from Etsy. I think it came all the way from Canada. And actually I was reviewing my Etsy orders the other day and this was actually a lot more expensive than I remember it being. It was like 24 pound. I don't think that included shipping. I, I should probably check. Let me do that now. 
Okay, I'm looking at the screen now and it says it's the Go Draw Palette Mini Watercolor 8 Wells and I bought it in February 2023. It should have been £33.88. £33. £33. That's a ridiculous amount of money for something that is six centimeters by six centimeters. So it's basically a six centimeter square. So just over two and a little bit inches square, right? Look at the size of that. For the same price, I managed to get this one which included 21% VAT because it came to the Netherlands. So the VAT increased by a percentage. So this is the Pegano one. Yes, it's ridiculously expensive. I think it was £34, but <laughs> like, look at the size difference. <laughs> I know with this one, I don't have mixing space, but actually what I want to do is put colors in here that I wouldn't necessarily want to mix anyway and just use it as is, which incidentally is why I picked up another undersea green from Daniel Smith because it's a color I like using on its own or I could mix on the page. So it only has six wells, two, four, six. I'm really excited about it i'm not going to put anything in it that's tacky paint and i'm not going to show this to you now like filling it because i feel like that's a suitable video on its own you can get excited with me when we like swatch out the colors because you know i'm like for swatching colors but yeah this is called the tilda painters palette it's handmade in philadelphia from sustainably sourced wood from the usa it's made of maple and it's finished with tang oil or tongue oil i can't see the wording right it's pen and all now incidentally i might have actually pre-measured because i might have thought like well i've had this in my basket for a while on jackson's i might have pre-measured it and there might be space in my tool roll that i made myself specifically to fit this so you'll have to wait and see until when that video comes out anyway i'm gonna stop waffling thank you so much for watching hope you enjoyed this if you did give it a thumbs up subscribe if you'd like to see more videos for me that aren't art haul related you're here just for art hauls i'm afraid there won't be one of those for a little while but yeah thanks for watching take care and i'll see you soon bye